Hey, can we talk about the upcoming construction of the two-family apartment starting in two weeks? Wait, two-family apartment? Did you send this to the wrong person? No, I didn't. You are Mary, right? Yes, that's me. But what's this about a two-family apartment construction? Haven't you heard from Mike about it? No, he hasn't told me anything about a two-family apartment. He said he would inform his wife, but it seems he didn't. Well, it's not okay. I'm supposed to live in the two-family apartment with you. What? Living together? Yes. Are you against it? It's sudden and inconvenient. I rejected living together before marriage. But Mike said it would be lonely to leave his mother alone. So I asked if we could live together, and he easily agreed. Wait, I haven't agreed to anything. If Mike agreed, that's enough. Just follow along. Where is this two-family apartment being built? And the cost? The land is yours, right? The one you inherited from your grandfather. No, that land is in my father's name. You can't build an apartment there without permission. It's fine. Besides, you did inherit a significant amount of money. Pay for the construction. That's unreasonable. The money was inherited by my father, not me. Parents' money is like children's money, right? What are you talking about? And why an apartment? Because if it's an apartment, we can rent out the other units and get rental income. It's a win-win situation, living in a nice apartment and earning money. No, I oppose the construction. If you don't listen, I'll make sure you get divorced. Again, with the divorce threat? It's like a habit for you. If I don't say that, you won't listen. I'll talk to Mike about it. I doubt anything will change. Sorry, but I need to go for now. What have you done? Do you think you can get away with this? I'll make sure you get divorced immediately. Oh, it's you. I expected you'd contact me. Why did you stop the apartment construction? I worked hard to get a construction company to do it. Because it's our land, and we don't need an unnecessary apartment. I politely declined the construction company. You're such an insolent daughter-in-law. You'll regret making me angry. I'm serious about the divorce. I already filed for divorce. What? Yes, it's true. Mike and I are no longer married. I'll be leaving this house soon. Wait, I didn't know about the divorce. Mike didn't tell me. He always avoided difficult situations. He probably couldn't bring himself to tell you about the divorce. Wait, so the living together plan is off? Of course. Why would I live with someone as mean as you after a divorce? You called me mean. How dare you speak like that? Because we're no longer related. I'm finally free from a controlling mother-in-law and a mama's boy. How dare you? I was just trying to educate an ungrateful daughter-in-law. Educate? You constantly called to complain, badmouthed me in front of relatives, and tried to build an apartment on our land without permission. You should be grateful I was trying to educate you. What's there to be grateful for? I'm done with you. Finally, free from your toxicity. You ungrateful woman. I don't care. Goodbye. Mike and I ended up living in a small apartment together, barely making ends meet. Meanwhile, I moved to a new apartment, enjoying my freedom and focusing on my career. I decided to take my time before considering remarriage, ensuring I wouldn't repeat the same mistake. Next story. You know, anniversaries are great because you get to eat lots of delicious food. I wish there was an anniversary every day. Sarah, you always say the funniest things. Oh, but I'm serious. I'm thinking of coming up with some excuse to celebrate an anniversary every day. Wow, if you do that, no amount of money would be enough. Well, now that you mention it, that's true. But I don't really worry about money. I usually get it from everyone else. What? You get your money from everyone? Oh, by the way, I've heard that you use your friend's money without permission. They call you the thief mom. Calling me a thief mom is terrible. No, 
I'm just having meals on their behalf. What do you mean? After all, no one can really appreciate the taste of the fancy dishes we have on anniversaries, so I'm enjoying them for everyone. The food is happier that way. What are you talking about? It's their anniversary. If you eat their food without permission, they're going to get angry. Even if they get angry, I'm not afraid. Plus, chefs would rather have someone who appreciates the taste enjoy their food than someone who doesn't. That's just your opinion, Sarah. Also, using money without permission means you're eating the food without paying for it yourself. Of course. Why should I pay for someone else's anniversary meal? That's not the point. You're interfering with their anniversary and eating their food without permission. You should pay for it yourself. Be quiet. No matter what I do, I'm not wrong. Why do ordinary people always want to eat something labeled as luxurious? They can't even appreciate the taste. That doesn't give you the right to eat it. Why not? At least I can appreciate the taste better than the other moms. This is going nowhere. By the way, didn't you say your wedding anniversary is next week? Come on, I'll invite my relatives too. We'll have a big party. Absolutely not. Emily, happy 10th wedding anniversary. I'm using the luxury suite at the high-end hotel. It's wonderful to stay there for free. Make sure to pay when you leave. What? No way. Please, pay for the hotel stay. You're funny. Why should I pay for it when it's not my anniversary? Because payment is required on site by the person who is there. I think enjoying the hotel's meal is a lot better. Oh, really? By the way, what kind of food did you have at the hotel? Well, you ate, right? So you should be able to answer. Yeah, um, there was something like seafood. Perhaps it was sushi. Yeah, that's it. And the lamb, right? The restaurant's signature dish is the lamb royale. Yeah, that's it. Don't act like you know it. You definitely don't understand, do you? By the way, what was on the top of the lamb? Uh, something black. I thought it was burnt, so I pushed it aside. Oh, now it's clear that you don't know the value of anything. That black thing is a truffle, a high-class mushroom. A high-class ingredient? Avoiding it thinking it's burnt shows you don't understand its value at all. I knew that. I was just testing if you knew. No, you didn't. It was obvious. Shut up. I'm not poor. Well, whatever. Just make sure you pay for it. The bill for one person is about $5,000, but with your relatives, it should be around $25,000. $25,000? That's not an amount to pay for a meal. If your relatives share the cost, it's just $5,000 each. It's not that painful, right? Besides, you're rich, aren't you? Well, yes, but this was the place you planned, so you should pay. Sorry, but that logic doesn't work anymore. You should also make sure your relatives can pay. What do you mean? You probably invited your relatives saying it's on you, right? They likely didn't bring any money. No way, that can't be true. They're my relatives. They all left when I mentioned the bill. They got angry, saying they didn't know it was that expensive and told me to pay it all. I thought so. Emily, what should I do? Do I have to pay the $25,000 by myself? Yes, that's right. Well, it's your fault for ruining others' anniversaries and relying on their money. Wait, wait, I was wrong. So come pay the money. I didn't expect it to be this expensive. I told you it was a high-class hotel. You should have expected this amount. Are you making fun of me because I'm poor and don't know the prices at luxury hotels? Don't mock me. Just come and pay the money. I'm enjoying my anniversary meal with my husband, so I can't go there. I can't pay the $25,000. Please help me. Sarah somehow managed to persuade her husband to bring the money, and the situation was resolved for the time being. However, her husband was furious, and they ended up getting a divorce. After the divorce, Sarah moved into a tiny one-room apartment without a bath, costing only $2,000 per month, and started living on a barely sustainable part-time job. It's karma for ruining so many anniversaries. I hope she reflects on her actions. As for me, 
I still enjoy going to hotels with my husband for our anniversaries. Jessica, where did you go? Oh, mother-in-law. I just went shopping for a bit. Why did you go shopping without telling me? You should always say something before you leave. But mother-in-law, you weren't home at that time. Then you should have at least left a message. Seriously, you're such a thoughtless daughter-in-law. I'm sorry. Fine. More importantly, Jessica, I need you to move out of the apartment soon. What? Why so suddenly? My dear daughter is quitting her job and coming back here. I've already sold my house, so I told her she can stay in the luxury apartment you and my son live in. Wait, you can't just decide that on your own. What do you mean on my own? She's my precious daughter. You have no right to complain. But you can't just bring this on me. We need time to prepare the room and everything. Don't worry about the room. What do you mean? Because your room will become her room. Why? How could you? Obviously, you're the only outsider in this apartment. Outsider? I'm married into this family. I'm part of it. You're not blood related, so you're an outsider. Besides, your room is tacky. Those anime character dolls are disgusting, so I got rid of them. What? How could you throw away my things without permission? Silence. I'm the head of this house. A daughter-in-law shouldn't talk back to her mother-in-law. I've always thought you were unreasonable, but I never imagined it was this bad. What are you saying? It's natural for a mother-in-law to be above the daughter-in-law. In fact, you should be grateful to me for letting you marry my son. And you dare to talk back to me. How ungrateful. Marriage is a decision made between the two people involved. It's not because of you. Still talking back, huh? Fine. Once my daughter arrives, you're out immediately. If you do that, be prepared for the consequences. Fine, fine. Jessica, start packing your things. My daughter is coming, and you'll have to leave the luxury apartment. Then you'll need to take over the rent payments. What? No way. The rent is paid by my son, isn't it? No, John doesn't earn enough, so I've been paying the rent. I earn more than him. That's impossible. John earns more. If you think so, ask him yourself. He'll be embarrassed to admit that his wife is paying the rent. Are you saying my son is ashamed? It's not that I'm looking down on him. Actually, it's you who looks down on me. I look down on you? Of course I do. You're just a daughter-in-law. You see, using words like just a daughter-in-law is the problem. Anyway, do you even know how much the rent is? I don't know. Maybe $3,000? It's a luxury apartment. It's $10,000. $10,000 just for rent? A pensioner like me can't afford that. Then stop trying to kick me out. Without me, John can't pay the rent either. That's nonsense. Then where will my daughter live? Your daughter is an adult. She should find her own place to live. Are you saying my daughter isn't precious to you? Well, she's not my child. Besides, your daughter has always looked down on me. I don't like her. You don't like my daughter? What a disrespectful daughter-in-law you are. Regardless, I will not continue paying rent. So you're retracting your statement about kicking me out? No way. You'll live in some apartment and keep sending the rent. Why should I do that? Because you're a hindrance. We finally get a chance to live as a family again, and you're ruining it. That apartment is under my name, and I pay the rent. Kicking me out would be a crime. A crime? I just want to live with my family. Then find an apartment and live there. No, I can't go from a luxury apartment to a regular one. Once you experience luxury, it's hard to go back. That's nothing to brag about. If you want luxury, find a way to pay for it yourself. I can't. I'm on a pension. I can't afford a luxury apartment then give up on living in one. That apartment is mine. No way. I'll convince John to kick you out. John has had a pay cut and relies on me now. He won't agree to kick me out. My son, under your control? We're a couple. We support each other. 
quiet. Don't you have any gratitude towards me? What do you mean? I allowed this marriage, and I'm older. Show respect, and pay the rent. No. The one who pays the rent is the head of the house, which is me. You, the head? Nonsense. John is the head. Legally, yes, but I'm the one who pays, so I'm the real head. Ridiculous. I'm the real head. You're just an outsider. If you keep this up, I'll have to ask John to kick you out. What? Why would you do that? Because you never stop acting superior. We can't resolve this peacefully anymore. You should live with your daughter. She can't support herself. How can we live? Your daughter is young. She can find a job. Live on your pension until then. No, that's impossible. Please don't talk about kicking me out. I've made up my mind. I'll discuss it with John soon. Please, no. I'm sorry. I'll stop acting superior. Please let me stay. It's too late. Your daughter can't stay here. Live with her somewhere else. Please, I'm begging you. Forgive me. My mother-in-law learned her lesson. She finally gave up on moving her daughter into our apartment, and she and her daughter found a small but affordable studio apartment. Of course, her daughter had to find a job and fast. My husband, John, had a co-worker who owns a popular restaurant who hired her as a favor. With my mother-in-law's pension and her daughter's new job, they were able to live comfortably. Now that they are settled, John and I can finally enjoy our home again and live in peace.